And we're back with mic position number two. You can hear my chair creaking a little. I normally would not allow that to happen while I was making measurements. But note that you could not see the creaking of the chair in the real-time measurement as it scrolled across the screen. Normally, if you can hear it and, and or see it, you want to stop and correct it. However, in this case, we're going to move forward. Again, you can check your individual measurements. Do a sanity check. And move to the third mic position. Uh, just give it a nudge real quick here. And we will start with the next measurement, set of measurements for the next microphone point. So I won't be sitting in a chair so you shouldn't hear any creaking. Sure, there are those among you who remember the days when doing any kind of room correction meant that if there was an interruption or a problem with a measurement, you had to go way back to the beginning and start completely over from scratch. Those days are gone with Derek Live, where you can select any of these points, delete it, remeasure it as much as you need to, as much as you want to. But again, the algorithm is very forgiving in, my, in where the microphone placement it has been set. And you can pretty much use a random uh, selection of microphone points anywhere, anywhere around your listening position and get great results. If you don't believe me, give it a try. I think you'll see that the Direct Live algorithm is a miracle in itself. And we're going to move on. I'm going to pause and finish these measurements offline and we'll, we'll proceed from there. And we're back. You can see how these green status bars have kind of stacked up on the side over here. Let's mm -hmm. click them all out of the way real quickly. It is so unbelievably nice to be able to do these in any order. You can re remeasure one if you feel like you need to for some reason. You can save a whole project. All of the measurement data gets saved with the project. So you can save a project, come back tomorrow, the next day, next week, and do something a little differently. Delete a few of the points and try a little bit different arrangement. Remember though, if you change your furniture, change your microphone, change your seating arrangement, you'll really will need to start over. But to be able to have this kind of flexibility is just unbelievable and i think you'll fall in love with it really quickly let's move on to our final screen you'll see some signal processing is going to take place here for a few seconds from this point on all of the all of the filter design changes will be done in real time what it's doing right now is determining for the default set of target curves, what the output filters would be. And there you are. 
at the filter design screen. Just finishing up that process, you see the blue progress bar across the bottom. And you can hear my laptop fans complaining, whining and complaining about all the extra work they're having to do. Extra calculations and such. There we are. I just wanted to mention quickly that the nine measurement points that are standard for the chair uh, seating arrangement, they can be increased if you go to the sofa arrangement, especially if you use the more diffuse uh, setting. You can get uh, more than those nine points if you feel like you need them. Really, the way that you get a, diffu a more diffused image is by using a wider spread in the microphone calibration measurement points. As long as you use all of the measurement points within, say, two to three feet of the center listening position, you'll get a very sharp image. Using a wider spread of mic points will give you a more diffused image. The number of microphone points, nine, is plenty. For standard use with a, with a fairly focused uh, imaging target, 9 will give you great, fantastic results. More than that, I think is overkill. You can play with it if you want to. I think 9 is more than plenty though. So we'll proceed to filter design. I've already done this so we don't have to pause and wait for the, those calculations to be taking place. On the filter design screen, we can look at the individual measured and or corrected responses. For each of the individual speakers. For a group, or with a control click, we can mash them all together to a point where it becomes kind of meaningless. Hard to read. We'll just do a right speaker here in yellow. The colors are assigned automatically, but there is, let's get both of our measured and corrected curves there. You do have some power to change the colors by selecting the group colors from above for either or both measured or corrected response curves, like so. Whatever is useful to you to get the type of view that is most meaningful for you. Each of the measured spectra is actually a weighted average of the information taken from the many different microphone measurement points through the measurement process. If we look at the spread option, we can actually see the maximum and minimum values that were measured. And of course the Direct Live algorithm has the brain power to determine what information can be gleaned from those many different microphone measurement points to determine that nice measured spectrum right there. For most purposes, the measured and corrected spectra will be the most useful. Let's take a quick look at target curve. Any changes to the target curve are responded to in real time. We can add a point right here. And watch while the filter response is recalculated. Takes a few seconds. Real time, almost real time. Boom, there it is. We can delete that again. Drag and drop it anywhere we want it to be. It will respond to the change instantaneously. And there it is. And with the right click, we can delete any of the control points. And once again, the response will be instantly updated like like so